Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a Thai television film called Ugly Duckling Perfect Match. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Junita has an ideal life according to most people. She was born into a rich family, has a handsome boyfriend, several loving friends, and most of all, a pretty face. Her biggest supporter is her housekeeper, Aoi, who loves her like her own daughter. One day, Junita's boyfriend Max picks her up for a date. He frequently compliments her looks and is only dating her for her status. The couple is quite popular on Instagram and has collected several fans throughout the years. They meet some friends in a cafe and as always, Junita is the center of attention. The next morning, she wakes up to several hate comments on her most recent Instagram picture. People claim she has a wide face and compare it to a car wheel and a pancake. Junita, who has been called pretty her entire life, is heartbroken by the comments. She receives a call from Max, who also affirms that she has gained weight on her face. Junita starts to work out starting the next day. Being a good mentor, Aoi supports her, but also insists that she is pretty just the way she is. Junita's mother, on the other hand, does not feel the same way. The mother and daughter have to attend a reality show in a few weeks. Hence, she wants Junita to be in shape. After two weeks of eating healthy and exercising, she loses two kilos and feels confident. The next day, she meets Max yet again and goes on another date. While they're at it, he takes a picture of her eating in which the angle makes her face look rounder. It is accidentally posted on Instagram and soon, several negative comments about her face flood the comment section. Junita is saddened that even after all the hard work, she wasn't able to lose weight on her face. Her friends suggest she get Botox as a last resort. Initially, Junita is skeptical, scared of getting even more backlash for the procedure. Still, she goes to consult a doctor. After being convinced, she gets injected with fillers and returns home, hoping to look different. The next day, she does look different, but not in the way she had thought. The Botox has made her face swell. When she visits the doctor with concern, he reveals that she is allergic to Botox. By now, her face is completely filled with rashes that will only go away after a year-long treatment. She returns home disheartened and tells her mother about the recovery time. The mother is distressed that she cannot attend the event with her, but asks her to cheer up. Junita then calls her friends, hoping to meet them and get her mind off of things. But to her surprise, they refuse to be her friend anymore. The next day, Max comes to meet her and is startled by her face. He also makes an excuse about going abroad for studies and suggests they take a break from each other. That night, Junita is at her lowest when she discovers a website called The Ugly Duckling. It is a safe place for all conventionally unattractive people to share their experiences. She signs up to the website and makes some friends. After listening to her story, one of them suggests she consult a popular skin specialist in another city. If she gets treated by the doctor, the recovery might be sooner. Junita decides to move to another city and start a new life now that she can no longer go to her former school. She tells her mother about the plan, who agrees to let her move, but only if Aoi accompanies her. Junita accepts the deal with no fuss since Aoi is like a mother to her. While they prepare to leave, Junita changes her surname so none of her former friends and fans can track her down. She hopes to live a normal life and make genuine friends this time. In the following scene, Aoi and Junita arrive at her new school. Junita has a scarf wrapped around her face, so people won't judge her for her looks. Although the school is a downgrade from her previous one, she is ready to compromise. When she first walks in, a handsome guy named Leo offers her help. He is so attractive that Junita forgets to speak and just stares at him. A few seconds later, Leo asks her if she is mute, and she manages to blurt out that she needs directions to the principal's office. As they talk, we find out that they both study in the same faculty. Leo invites her to a welcome program that the seniors have hosted for the newcomers. Later, she goes to the program and meets a funny guy named B. His personality makes him easy to talk to, so she instantly befriends him. The president of the cheer club, Tui, introduces himself to everyone. He expects the newcomers to respect the older students and stay submissive. Since the guys are attractive, no one seems to mind following their orders. They organize a dance battle that Junita thoroughly enjoys. She is happy for the first time since the facelift fiasco, which gives her hope of a steady ride during her time in the school. Junita and Aoi then visit the hostel where they are supposed to stay. 
Three girls, who are already waiting for a fourth roommate, invite Junita to stay with them and provide Aoi with another room. The girls excitedly enter their dorm room to see that it is congested and dirty. Still, they settle in, happy to finally have found a friend group in the new place. The girls introduce themselves as Ning, Nui, and Joy. Ning is friendlier than the other two, as she urges Junita to feel at home with them. As they talk, Junita's scarf slides down, and her face scares Nui and Joy. Ning, however, tells her that it's okay, and asks her about her rashes. After Junita tells them her story, she feels bad for her, and lets her stay with them, much to the other girl's annoyance. When Junita is not in the room, they complain about living together with someone who looks like a ghost. Ning shuts them down, asserting that Junita will return to her normal self in a year. Junita overhears their conversation from the bathroom and is heartbroken. She cries alone for a few minutes before joining them again. The following day, she wears a big pair of sunglasses and a scarf to hide her face. The freshmen have gathered for a program. Her friends urge her to take the scarf off, but she refuses. The president of the cheer club, Tui, sees them chatting and is furious at them for not paying attention to the program. He brings Junita in front of everyone and urges her to take her scarf off. Junita shakes in fear but still refuses to take it off out of embarrassment. Then, Leo comes to her side and promises to protect her. But he also asks her to take the scarf off for now, since Tui will not let the matter go until he gets what he wants. Junita reluctantly does as told and makes the crowd gasp at her face. Everyone starts whispering and laughing at her, making her feel more awful than she already does. She looks at Leo to read his expression, but he doesn't give away what he is thinking. Tui laughs hysterically and encourages the others to make fun of her, calling her a ghost. The humiliation is too much for Junita to take, and she starts to cry. The crowd only stops chanting when Leo speaks on her behalf. He asks them to come forward and show everyone how they look, before bashing Junita for something she cannot control. He also makes the crowd apologize to her, including Tui. Junita is touched by the gesture and stops wearing the scarf because of him. She feels confident in her skin for the first time in a long time. The event continues, where the students take part in several games. Then, it is announced that the freshman's attitude is the most important factor that makes them a true student of their school. Hence, to test their character, the seniors have planted a spy among us. Uh, I mean, among them. The spy turns out to be none other than Ning. She affirms that all the freshers have unique and great personalities. Following that, the newcomers are paired with a respective senior, who will work as their guide for the first semester. Junita is paired up with Leo, much to her delight. After the program, she spots Ning and Leo together. It is soon revealed that the two are a couple. Junita feels a pang of jealousy, but hides it efficiently. She also goes to the skin specialist who adds a few pills to her medication for accelerated recovery. Junita feels confident that she will get back her old, clear skin in no time. One day, she and her roommates are passing their time by telling each other horror stories. The rain outside makes the atmosphere even more frightening. Suddenly, their roof starts to leak, making them panic. They pack their luggage and run to the receptionist, asking for another room to stay in. However, all the rooms in the hostel are packed. Junita's roommates find a place for the night and leave her there alone. She tries calling Aoi, but cannot reach her. As a last resort, she calls Ning and asks to stay at her place for the night. When she goes to her apartment, she figures out that the couple lives together. Leo is financially weak and struggling to earn money for school fees. Hence, he stays with Ning currently. He leaves the bed for the girls and sleeps on the floor for the night. The following morning, Junita wakes up to see Leo shivering. She puts a blanket over him when he unconsciously snuggles closer to her. Junita somehow gets free from his embrace, but doesn't notice him smiling. It is evident that he held her close on purpose. The next day at school, B, Junita, Leo, and Ning decide to go out to eat. Leo gets on his scooter, which refuses to start. Ning repeatedly asks him to get a new one, inconsiderate of the fact that he cannot afford it. Moreover, he accidentally breaks his slippers while trying to start the scooter. As he fixes it, Ning feels humiliated. She throws the sandals away and storms off. Leo still insists that they go through with the plan and go out to eat. In the following scene, the three are at a restaurant. On being asked what she thinks about the argument, Junita claims that Ning must have been worried for him, since the old scooter might have caused an accident. Leo understands and calls Ning to apologize like a good boyfriend. Following that, Junita moves into the apartment next to Ning and Leo, deciding to stay there until the dorm's ceiling is fixed. 
Aoi also moves in with her to help her with household work. She is especially impressed with Liho's handsomeness and urges Junita to be his girlfriend. The two then go out to a restaurant for lunch. To Junita's surprise, Ning enters the restaurant with a man who is not Leo. Junita hides her face with a menu and eavesdrops on their conversation. It is revealed that the guy's name is Tot, and he is Ning's second boyfriend. He is a rich man, loved by Ning's parents, who are also wealthy. Hence, they want Tot to be Ning's boyfriend, not Leo. Junita tries her best to stay hidden, but Ning happens to see her. She quickly leaves before the situation gets more awkward. At night, she can hardly fall asleep, thinking about the events of the day. Leo has been nothing but nice to her, which puts her in a dilemma as to whether she should tell him the truth. The next day, during lunch break, the group is hanging out together when Leo gets a call from an unknown number. Ning gets mad at him, assuming that the number belongs to a girl. Although Leo insists that he hasn't given his number to anyone, she walks away furiously. Junita quietly huffs, baffled by Ning's hypocrisy. All of a sudden, Tot arrives at the school to surprise Ning. He sits with Junita and the group waiting for his girlfriend to return. Junita nervously keeps the conversation going, but Tot doesn't stop talking about Ning. When a furious Leo asks him how he knows Ning, he reveals that she is his girlfriend. It turns out that she told Tot she broke up with Leo a long time ago. The men get into a fight and only stop when Ning returns. Leo asks her what she wants, to which Ning replies that her parents will never accept him because of his financial condition. She doesn't love him enough to go against her parents and knows that someday they will have to separate. At last, the two break up before Leo walks away. He doesn't come to school for the next week and doesn't pick up anyone's calls. Junita is constantly worried about him. Her friends start to suspect that she likes him, but she is quick to shut the rumpus down. Then, in the last scene, Leo approaches Junita out of nowhere and surprises her. Junita had missed him so much that she hugs him instantly. The embrace sparks a warm feeling in Leo as well. Junita finally has someone who likes her for who she is, and not because of her money, beauty, or status. They talk for a long time, indicating the start of a new relationship. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.